All right, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for, for attending. Um, my name is Paul McIntyre. I head up uh, the platform group at, uh, at Chango. Um, and want to talk to you guys today about retargeting and a lot of different types of retargeting uh, out there and, and ways that you can do that uh, today. So uh, get started. Um, you know, just as a side note, uh, as cute as the baby is on, on the presentation, um, and as much as my wife may think I'm a baby, uh, my daughter will not be presenting that uh, picture of my daughter. Um, so anyway, so we'll begin. So why, why do, uh, you know, marketers use Chango? Uh, and that is, you know, we consistently and, and professionally solve their digital needs. So we've uh, been around in, in business since 2008 and are the, you know, leader in search retargeting uh, primarily, but we have grown to do a lot of different things. Um, and from a platform perspective, um, you know, you have the ability to do lots of different things within, um, within our platform with, you know, in, in terms of uh, programmatic marketing. Um, one of the things that we, we offer, we offer full, fully managed solutions as well as our platform solutions. Um, the, the platform solution is a more of a self-service type platform, whereas the fully managed solution um, allows you to have, you know, a full service representative um, to help manage your campaigns. Uh, you know, we primarily do prospecting for, for new customers. Uh, as I said, search retargeting is our, uh, one of our primary um, assets that we have in house. Uh, we also do lookalike targeting as well. Um, and as well as programmatic site retargeting. So, um, those are kind of all the three things that we do. Uh, we also have the ability to upload any of your data um, and, and do any sort of um, CRM-based marketing as well, where we can match um, any offline transaction data to your, um, you know, to cookies and then be able to, to market to those consumers uh, proactively to get them to convert. Um, Chango in and of itself is, you know, um, you know, have, has about 75 people, um, and, and we are growing constantly every day. Uh, we have about 8 million, 18 million in funding uh, with a 90% uh, customer retention rate, and we have seen tremendous growth in the space, um, you know, over the years, uh, upwards of 600% year-over-year growth. We have um, offices throughout the United States and international, um, including, you know, Toronto as, as, our, um, as our hub, and, and London as well. Um, I personally am based out of Chicago, and we have offices in, you know, um, you know, Seattle, LA, Atlanta, and Dallas, and New York, obviously. Um, so to kind of get into, into you know, targeting and, and data. So um, with, with programmatic marketing and big data, you know, these are not buzz terms anymore. So, uh, you know, every day we are seeing more and more consumers using data and big data to do programmatic marketing. Um, we're even seeing from a brand perspective, you know, brand dollars being allocated into this medium because it is just a more efficient way to buy advertising. So uh, today's, you know, we have the ability to target individuals at a very, very granular level um, using data, um, whether that is your data, um, you know, if you own an e-commerce site or if you have online data or offline data. Um, to, in today's world, you can upload that information into um, you know, a Chango-like platform and be able to, you know, programmatically market to those consumers um, ongoing to get them to convert. From, from the types of retargeting we'll discuss today, um, you know, I know traditionally a lot of people, uh, you know, think of retargeting as just site retargeting, but there uh, really are a lot of different types of retargeting out there. Um, you know, from, from this study, you know, they've identified five major types of retargeting. There are certainly more um, as well, but uh, these are probably the most widely used uh, and some that we'll talk about today. Uh, email is, is the first one that's on the list. Uh, you know, that is essentially leveraging, you know, pe people who open emails and, uh, you know, where we can then drop, you know, cookies on, on those people who, who do open the emails and then proactively message them based off of, you know, whatever behavior they, they looked at uh, within their email, if it was, a, um, you know, based on category or whatever you deem relevant. Um, you know, site retargeting obviously is the largest one, um, and that is really just, you know, targeting consumers who are, you know, coming to your site and interacting with your brand, um, and then, you know, once they leave and do not convert, um, attempting to get them to come back to your site and, and, and convert. 
Uh, search retargeting, like I said, Chango is, is the industry leader in search retargeting. Uh, we you know, work with thousands of data partners across the internet and we you know, store this keyword level data um, of, you know, at a cookie level of people who are coming to our data partner sites. Uh, we're capturing the furring URL and the keyword that is associated to them. Um, and then have the ability to aggregate those, that data pool and build customizable campaigns to our advertisers. Um, Chango has about, stores about 8 billion um, search terms on a monthly basis, and we have about 300 million profiles of consumers in the U.S., uh, North America, I should say, as well as uh, the U.K. Um, and we can leverage that data to, you know, to do, run these campaigns. Um, if you look at Comscore rankings from 2012, Chango ranks actually second in size in terms of the amount of search data that we capture on a monthly basis. Uh, second to Google, uh, we are um, larger than Yahoo, Bing, Ask.com, or any of the other really major providers combined. Um, so just to give you an understanding of the size of data that we're capturing on a monthly basis. Um, you know, a lot of people, Facebook, once, since they launched their, uh, their exchange, uh, that has seen tremendous growth over the last few years. Um, and, you know, just given the reach and size that, that Facebook is, it is a, it's a terrific channel to, to reach consumers uh, as well. Um, you know, we'll get into it a little bit later. Chango also has the opportunity to obviously target on those um, on Facebook, uh, as well as in the news feed ads as well, which is something that uh, is relatively new and only a few companies have that ability. Um, creative targeting, we probably won't touch too much. It doesn't really, um, a lot of people don't do a lot of it. It's really just marketing off of, um, you know, when you serve ads, the ability to understand where those ads go and, and what, what sites they're being served on so then you can retarget those consumers. Uh, another, I think, is actually a very good um, channel of advertising is CRM-based retargeting. So uh, I kind of touched on that a little earlier where you have the ability to upload any sort of offline data uh, that you're storing on a regular basis, whether that's transactional data, uh, whether that's email-based data, um, registration data, whatever it may be. Um, obviously, the more data, the better, but you have the ability to upload that data, match it to our cookie pool, and then message consumers proactively uh, who have not necessarily gone to your site or have done any sort of in-market searching. Uh, this is a great tactic for prospecting, especially for um, lapsed consumers um, who may not have come to your site in a few years or purchased in a few years um, to kind of get that brand awareness and get them to, um, you know, re-engage re with your brand. Now, site retargeting is, like I said, one of the major components. Now, Chango really does believe that um, site retargeting is kind of fundamentally broken. Um, there are reasons for this. Uh, you know, traditionally a lot of consumers um, who, who employ this tactic really only just kind of put a pixel on a site. When someone abandons, um, you know, they, they leave and, and a consumer is messaged. Um, kind of not very targeted. Um, what we think is actually better is um, you know, to just employ more data and, and have a data drive more efficiency and, and better messaging, um, you know, to those consumers. Um, so over the course of time and the evolution of retargeting, um, you know, it started out as, you know, your standard retargeting. Um, and then, you know, as you know, time evolved, it got more advanced where you're, you're kind of messaging based off of, you know, page categories or product categories. Um, you know, what, what Chango believes is, actually the infusion of lots of different data points, not just on your site. So, uh, you know, I like the example of, you know, just understanding, you know, someone who may go to a Babies R Us or something like that, um, you know, and searches for diapers. And, um, but on the internet, they're, they're looking at cribs because, you know, a mother is expecting a baby. Well, you know, Babies R Us may only know that um, they're searching for diapers and may, you know, serve them an ad for diapers. But, you know, this person is actually consuming a lot of content and, and comparison shopping on cribs. Um, so that information is very valuable. And, and we believe that, you know, in a solution that incorporates kind of both of those strategies, as much data as possible, 
um, is, is very important in, in, in messaging. Um, we also believe in transparency and, and the reduction of waste um, to help manage your campaigns. So uh, Chango offers the ability to have full transparency with all of this, uh, the retargeting that you do, um, even at a, at, a, at a site level. Um, so you know, we do not believe in, in the black box approach of, of retargeting. Now, what do people primarily use site retargeting for? Um, you know, the poll, you know, the polls we've seen show that you know it's it's primarily for direct response, um, and and that is really to increase revenue. Um, most people do that. Um, you know, like you know, like the graph says, it also you know is to um, increase on-site engagement and brand awareness, but primarily um, it is a tactic to drive you know, direct response and incremental revenue. Now, what, what are the seven types of effective retargeting? There are probably more um, that this slide shows, but, um, you know, you can kind of lump everything into um, two, two primary, primary buckets, um, you know, retargeting off of site events and then retargeting off of off-site events. Um, within search, you have kind of both. You have um, site searches, so you have the ability to understand um, you know, what people are coming, how they're coming to your site, what keywords are driving them to your site, and then you would have the ability to message those consumers uh, based off of the keywords that they are driven by your, or to your site. Um, and then also, you know, what Chango does, which is, you know, taking this large, massive pool of intent, keyword intent data, and then messaging those consumers as well um, based off of information that is not on your site. Um, you also have site interaction information, so whether they're browsing, you know, specific categories of your site, um, you know, and whatnot, you have the ability to understand that and then proactively message them as well uh, based on the category of products of purchase that they, you know, that they've been, been visiting. Um, certainly SEO and SEM and email are, are uh, um, you know, technically on-site events or at least on internet events um, and potentially drive, you know, are being, you know, traffic is being driven to your site through those channels. Um, from an off-site perspective, you have, you know, like we said, we had search, um, social, uh, which I'm not sure if, uh, if any of you saw the announcement uh, last week, but, you know, um, Chango has been is partnering with uh, Twitter, uh, and we're going to have some interesting things coming up in, in the coming months with uh, the ability to, um, you know, leverage Twitter to, to do social retargeting. Um, and, uh, and then also, um, you know, contextual or engagement metrics or, you know, channels as well. Um, and then I will allude to the CRM data uh, that you can also upload and, and leverage um, as an off-site event, um, whether that's a transaction or an email sign-up, um, that, that you can take that information, upload it into um, the system, match to cookies, and then proactively message against those consumers. Get into search retargeting. So, um, you know, we believe this is a, a tremendous channel to, to drive, um, you know, acquisition primarily, but um, also just, you know, um, great communication uh, to consumers. Uh, it is, you know, as I alluded to, the ability to take keyword data at a, at a cookie level and um, understand what a consumer's intent is online and then proactively message them based off of, uh, you know, what they're, what they're doing on the Internet. Um, in terms of in market activity. So, um, yeah, I'll kind of just you know, touch on it a little bit more. Um, you know, when someone searches on the internet, uh, they, you know, are on Google. Uh, they may type in, you know, um, Honda CRV or something like that, and it takes them to cars.com or whoever, whatever site that, that, you know, that they go to. Um, well, as a data partner, if they land on one of our partner sites, we then know um, that they came from Google, they searched on Honda CR CRV, uh, and, uh, and then we can then take that data at a, um, at a cookie level, aggregate it, and then target those consumers uh, who, who did those types of searches. So we can then go to, say, Honda or whoever, and say, we know people who are um, actively in market for Honda CRVs. And, and then we can um, serve them the relevant messaging uh, based off of, um, you know, based off of the data that, that they were searching on. Uh, again, we, were, we are the second largest source of search data, 
Um, we do offer fully and self-service solutions for this. Um, and, uh, and, you know, obviously it's used for, um, to boost brand awareness and for prospecting. Um, and again, when we, when we do polls uh, to understand what consumers are using this type of channel for, uh, you can see heavily that most people are uh, using this for, um, for prospecting. It is a great tool to understand um, intent that's not necessarily on your site, uh, there, there are consumers who may not even know your brand, um, and it, it is the ability to get in front of those consumers uh, to be able to do that. Um, I, I think also an interesting component of search retargeting is uh, the ability to kind of do competitive bidding uh, in the space where um, you, know, you have the ability to, which, which, that you don't have in Google where uh, you can't necessarily bid on you know, competitive keyword terms, um, you do have the ability to specifically target those types of um, keyword terms on the, you know, through search retargeting and display. Um, so it is a tactic that is employed by a lot of our clients um, to, to do that type of, you know, um, campaign. And now we'll get into Facebook. So uh, as, as I alluded, um, Chango is, you know, integrated with, with the Facebook exchange, um, you know, so because of that, you know, you have access to, you know, over a billion registered users um, and almost a quarter of all the real-time display impressions that are seen across the Internet. So uh, from a reach perspective, uh, there is no greater place to find reach um, on the Internet, and uh, it allows the ability to, to really uh, scale programs um, as needed and find the right people. You know, kind of the evolution of, of Facebook marketing, you know, you have, you know, the native Facebook ads and, and the FBX ads. Uh, I don't know if any of you have done any sort of native Facebook buying, but if you have, it's, you know, where you kind of log into the Facebook account, you upload some creative, you set a campaign up, and you start targeting, you know, demographic profile information based off of what consumers have shown themselves, um, you know, or, you know, showed themselves in their profile. So, uh, you know, based on geo or likes and dislikes, um, you know, they, you can then have the ability to target those ads. With, with the Facebook exchange, you know, it's the real-time bidding portion of, um, of their display, uh, and, you know, it, it allows you to do programmatic media buying um, based off of the data that you're capturing or the companies that you're partnering with to then be able to target those consumers um, in a real-time bidding environment. Um, right now, as I said, you know, you have the ability to do right rail advertising, and then now um, with Chango, uh, you have the ability to do the uh, news feeds as well. Um, and this just kind of shows, um, you know, the ways that you can, um, you can target. So as I said, you, you can do lots of prospecting through search retargeting or using um, any sort of third-party data that you have access to, which you can um, access in Chango's platform. Um, and, or you can use your, um, you know, existing visitors, you know, kind of traditional site retargeting. Um, you can, like I said, have the ability to now do in-news in feeds as well as the, uh, the right-hand side of, of the Facebook exchange. So uh, we are seeing... Um, Pretty very good uh, results um, for for the in news feeds. Uh, the for any of the if you've been paying attention to it, any of the uh, um, you know preliminary results that have been published out on the internet shows that the the in news feeds are um, significantly higher in performance. Um, you know we will have um, I'm sure we will be producing information on on some of our use cases as well uh, once we have them, but uh, the indications seem to be very positive. Um, FBX is gaining traction, so it's a relatively new product, you know, when you compare it to the other uh, real-time bidding exchanges, um, but when you compare um, and, and ask, you know, people in the next six months, what are they going to be doing with Facebook, 60% uh, of consumers or, um, you know, people who buy media are going planning to increase their media spend in the Facebook exchange. Um, this is just going to increase, we know this. Um, and I think with the addition of the, the news feeds, that should exacerbate that as well. 
Um, email retargeting. So uh, as I alluded to, uh, it's, it's really kind of um, targeting consumers who open email um, or you know, um, do other types of things within email. But um, it is a very efficient tactic to, to be able to, um, to message those consumers. Um, you can um, do it in a couple different ways, uh, you know, shopping cart and email retargeting, as well as email blast retargeting. So um, a lot of consumers will um, send emails to consumers who, or a lot of e-commerce sites will send uh, emails to consumers who, um, you know, abandon the cart and, and don't necessarily purchase. Uh, it allows you to, um, you know, know who maybe abandoned your cart but still is opening an email. So there is, there is intent um, at, in addition to just putting something in the cart. Um, and then um, you, you can certainly blast, you know, email or, or do retargeting based off of people who have opened emails um, and, uh, and then, you know, message them across the Internet. CRM retargeting. So, that, you know, uh, kind of mentioned this as well. Uh, I think this is a very um, good tactic to, to employ from a, from a retention perspective. Uh, you know, constant communication with, you know, in this world and in, in this marketplace is key and competitors are popping up all the time. And this just, you know, allows you to, um, to really, you know, continually message your consumers who are, um, you know, who you don't have purchased and, and may have been lapsed or, or actually purchased frequently. So historically, um, I personally have seen um, this is a great tactic to upsell, cross-sell consumers. So you can actually um, identify high, you know, frequency purchase clients or high, or, you know, consumers or high value consumers uh, who buy a lot or buy high, you know, ticket items. Um, and then you have the ability to, you know, upsell, cross-sell them uh, to get them to purchase more often. Um, so it's, it's a way to not only get consumers to purchase, but also to get them to purchase over and over and use your brand again. Um, and, and that's, you know, kind of the, you know, the, uh, the world of, um, of retargeting. Um, if you have any more um, you know, questions or anything like that or want to learn more, um, you certainly can go to chango.com uh, forward slash resources. Uh, and there are lots of documentation that our marketing team has put together um, to, uh, you know, to, to help you, you know, just gain a better understanding. Um, and then also plug for, for our next webinar um, we will um, be having on August 15th um, regarding the Facebook exchange. Um, and, uh, and now, you know, we'll probably open it up for questions. I, I see some have come through already, so I will uh, briefly um, browse through these. Uh, question from Natasha Young. How often do clients actually give you various creative execution so that you can tailor the ad to the content being consumed on the site? Um, that's a good question. So that can kind of be done in a couple different ways. Um, you, uh, you can certainly provide static creative to, to do this type of, um, you know, messaging. However, depending on the complexity of what you want to do, um, dynamic creative is probably the better solution to do that. So, uh, that gives you the flexibility to, um, kind of create one set of templates that, um, you know, you have maybe four or five different dynamic components inside one creative template. Uh, that could be an image, background image, a logo, um, some copy on, you know, on the top or the middle, and then maybe a, a go-to-action differentiation um, that you can dynamically change. Um, and then once you have built that template, uh, you can create business rules um, through, you know, what's typically being done as lookup tables um, that says, you know, if this consumer went to X product, show um, this product image uh, and then, or if they went to this page category, show this type of page category image, um, you know, from, you know, to that consumer. Um, yes, you can get a PowerPoint preview. We'll, we'll be sending out the PowerPoint presentation as well um, after, this is, after this is done. Um, when did news feed ads via Facebook um, become available in the market. Uh, very recently, uh, Facebook um, ads have been 
you know, essentially available, been made available. Um, you know, my understanding is that it's, it's you know, very recent uh, and, and um, still technically kind of in a, in a beta period. Um, and there's only a handful of companies that have access to uh, that inventory, uh, Chango, being, Chango being one of them. Within Facebook, are you targeting keywords used within an individual po individual's post? Um, we certainly can target um, keywords um, of a consumer that is uh, ha has done searches on the internet. Uh, we are certainly not um, targeting keywords um, within a specific Facebook post. Um, that you would, in order to do that, you would have to have direct integration with Facebook, um, which pretty much nobody does have. Uh, and, you know, so the only data that we have available is at the time of the bid, we have, you know, they essentially tell us um, whether or not our cookie is present and then pass us the cookie ID. And then from there, we have the ability to say, okay, this consumer um, searched for a Honda CRV on the internet. So we, and we have a, you know, a deal with Honda in place. So we're going to show a Honda ad to, um, to that consumer. Um, does growing privacy concerns affect your strategy regarding search retargeting? Um, you know, the, that is a great question and it seems to be an ongoing question. Um, you know, my personal thought is that, um, you know, that has been a topic of conversation for probably three or four years now uh, and it doesn't seem to be really making any sort of um, major headway. Will that change? You know, I think that remains to be seen. Um, my, my personal thought and stance on that is that um, it would have a major impact on a multi-billion dollar industry. Um, and, and I think from a, from a legal perspective um, and from a, you know, just from a political perspective, um, those things that they, they have to take very closely into account. Um, if you if you think of like uh, companies like you know um, you know the news sites that have you know you know paper you know newspapers um, and how you know you can see in the news every day that their um, their business is you know the subscription base is going down and everything's moving online um, and the way that they're driving revenue is through companies that are able to pay a premium for their inventory because they know something about that consumer. Um, and, and companies like that um, will also be affected. So um, I, I, I don't think there'll be, you know, what, what we have today may not be in place tomorrow, but from a, from a short and even interim perspective, uh, I don't see too much, too much change in the industry um, from my perspective. So I'm not too concerned at, at this point. Um, does Chango currently offer retargeting capabilities in both desktop and mobile? Um, we do certainly have um, ability to do desktop as well as um, uh, you know multiple device type um, targeting through you know potentially Android. Um, when you're getting into mobile, that is a um, interesting topic. Uh, there there are ways to do that. Um, typically, though, um, you have a couple barriers that need to get around. Uh, one being apps. The app market um, is kind of its own unique little world, and the ability to do programmatic media buying, um, you know, using cookies and, and stuff like that to do to do that type, uh, is is very difficult in in the app world since um, each app, you know, you know, um, you know, Apple does not provide device IDs anymore, stuff like that. So there are ways to do it. Uh, people, you know, who may be doing it are are uh, using, you know, very various ways to kind of derive that information. Um, you know, we, we offer that ability as well, but, um, but from a programmatic perspective, it is, it, there are certainly challenges. And then when you get into, um, you know, obviously Apple and Safari where, uh, where pixels are not, um, you know, persistent uh, or third party pixels are not persistent, um, you, you kind of lose that consumer. There are ways to get around that. And we have, um, uh, you know, have worked with, with, you know, kind of dropping uh, first party type pixels and stuff like that to, to access that type of inventory. Um, but that's, you know, a really, a, a much deeper integration that we would need to do with our clients. Um, what is the best way to get started with Chango? Um, 
email either me or, or uh, you know, um, go on to, um, you know, our website and, and you know, contact the, the appropriate person. Uh, as I said, you know, I head up our platform solutions group, um, and that is, you know, more of a self-service style solution for consumers who want to do their, you know, um, do their own media buying. Uh, we have full service opportunities where you would have a dedicated account um, person who would manage the, the campaigns entirely um, and, uh, and, and, and do that all for you. Um, so depending on what you want to do, um, you know, certainly reach out, but you can reach out to me directly. And if, if, if I'm not the one you want to talk to and you want to get into, um, you know, the full service side, you know, I certainly can direct that information um, accordingly. Uh, which search engines do you use to gather your search retargeting data? Um, that is, uh, we have access to all of it. So um, that is a, a good question. Um, since we are integrating on um, our clients or our data partners' sites and we're capturing the inventory, um, you know, from, um, from the referral, uh, we, we know if someone came from Google, we know if someone came from Yahoo, we know, you know, whatnot. Um, so we have that ability to do, um, to do a lot of those, uh, pretty much every major, um, um, every major data source. Um, does anyone have any more questions? All righty. Well, um, if there are no more questions, um, it was a pleasure. Thank you very much for your time, and uh, thanks again. And like I said, if you if you want to, um, if you have any more questions or if you want to get in touch with um, anyone, uh, you can fill out the contact form on Chango.com, um, as well as call the number on top. There should be um, uh, very visible ways of uh, communicating to get access to um, to a to a person. All right, well, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Please stand by.